Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to have a look at another collaboration beer. And this one happens to be between two of my favourite Swedish breweries. So for the home brewery, we are going to go up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebor as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital. And that means that we are going to have a look at another beer from Beerbliotech this time. So this is a collaboration that they've done with Brewski, who are from Helsingborg down here in Scotland in the south of Sweden. This particular beer is number 283 according to the Beer Bibliotech numbering system and it's called Don't You Look So Surprised Happy Birthday Trucker. So this one is one of the um, Beer Bibliotech birthday collaborations and uh, I think this was actually done for their sixth birthday if I remember rightly but hopefully this one should be a really nice beer this one was released as part of the local Osmosko League assortment in Sistembolag here in Sweden on the 1st of June 2020. So um, yeah, it's a New England IPA coming in at 7% ABV. This is a style that both of these breweries are well versed in and uh, hopefully this turns out to be another very, very nice beer actually. So um, yeah, I've had some very good examples of this style from both breweries so I have a good feeling about this one. So um, yeah, curious to see how it turns out and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. This one of course is going to be my midsummer beer. Um, so this is the review that will air on uh, on midsummer so i'm filming it around lunchtime on midsummer so i hope you guys have an awesome night and uh, yeah midsummer basically the biggest holiday that you have in sweden but basically it's another excuse to go out and get drunk and things like that but uh, yeah the scandinavians like to do that and who can blame them the scots and the irish of course we were always the kind of same as that so um yeah let's see how we get on with this one then so as always with my reviews i'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast Fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites, the link to my other reviews that I've done, both from Beer Bibliotech and from Brewski. No doubt you will see more added to both of those lists at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Beer Bibliotech first then since these guys are the home brewery so as I've told you many a time Beer Bibliotech are based in Gothenburg Jutebor as you would say in Swedish and the company was founded back in 2013 by a multinational group of friends. This is Adam Norman who's an Australian, Richard Bull who's a Kiwi New Zealander, Anders Hedlund who is Swedish and then Darl Denecker who's from South Africa. So Adam and Richard ran Bar Doppio in Gothenburg and then Darl and Anders were regular customers at the bar and they often just used to sit and talk about different styles of beer and things like this and what they liked and eventually they decided one day that they were going to buy a brew kit and brew their own beer. So the original brewery that these guys have was in the old or is in the old Klipan Sugar Building, which is a really nice old building, very close to the old Carnegie Brewery in Gothenburg, the Gamma uh, Carnegie Brewery, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but quite a famous Swedish company that actually I still need to review their beer for you on the channel at some point. And um, but the brew kit that they have is from Brewfab in Scotland, and in their first year they apparently brewed about 38 different varieties of beer, and all their beers were brewed in very very small batches, and they said they wanted to stick to the home brewing roots of very rarely brewing the same beer. So they say that they don't have a fixed range, but there are beers that do appear, you know, again and again every year and things like that. So they do kind of have a regular range at the same time, if you like, um, but they're always brewing new beers as well. And this is why they have their numbering system. This one is number 283, of course. So they have brewed a hell of a lot of different beers. But in 2015 they opened up a second brewery in Kungsten, which is where they now have their main tap room and they run their main brewing operations from there. The older brewery is now used for producing their sour beers and they're also working on a barrel aging project at the new brewery as well. And you have seen me review one or two beers from that barrel aging project, but there are a few that I would like to get a hold of from that. They do have a Scotch ale that I would really love to actually to, to get a hold of at some point and that one hasn't been released through its Sistembolaget yet. So fingers crossed I can somehow get 
a hold of that one. And um, but the idea behind the name Beer Bibliotheque is basically that these guys wanted to brew a wide variety of beers so that the customers were always learning something new about beer, be it a new variety of hop, um, a new malt type, or a new yeast strain and things. Uh, and the idea that they wanted was to basically build a library of different beers, hence the name Beer Bibliotheque, the beer library. But as of June 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced around 265 different types of beer. I think there have been a few batches that haven't been released, and this is why the um, and this is why you know the numbers don't quite match up. Daryl has told me I sp I've spoken to Daryl Denecker a few times, and he has said to me, I'm sure, that there are a few batches of beer that just haven't been uh, released because they just didn't turn out right. So um, yeah, number two hundred eighty-three. This one that we're going to today, so which is pretty impressive. I think maybe I've reviewed about I must have reviewed at least fifteen beers from uh, from Beer Bibliotheque actually and these guys are one of my favorite Swedish breweries the thing that's very impressive about these guys is as I say that they just they you know they brew a batch and they seem to get it consistently good and if you're thinking about this over like 7 years that these guys have, or the nearly 7 years that these guys have been going now and um, for them to only have dropped like 20 batches of beer when they brew them as mainly one offs I think that is pretty damn impressive. So yeah, 263 beers listed on Untapped, I think it was, and then 283 in the cans. That is pretty damn impressive. So yeah, Beer Bibliotech, one of the Swedish breweries that I really recommend that you check out, one of my favourite Swedish breweries, and you get a lot of very, very interesting beers from these guys. So um, yeah, well let's leave it at that for Beer Bibliotech then. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and of course you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on to the away side of things then, on to Brewski down here in Skåne. So Brewski Microbreggery, as I've told you before, were found you back in 2014 and they're based in Helsingborg in the northwest corner of Skåne here in the south of the country. So the founders of this company are Marcus Hjalmarsson, Johan Britson, Alfred Olsen and Robin Skoglund and all of these guys were really inspired by to get into craft beer after trying the west coast American beers, a good number of years back. So Marcus was originally associated with the High Nose brand of beer which is still brewed at Hoogenis Bregory, again to the south, to the northwest, sorry, of Helsingborg on the Kulaberry Peninsula, a very very beautiful part of the country incidentally and uh, those beers are still brewed up there and the original Brewski beers were brewed in Hoogenis as well but all of the Brewski beers are now brewed at their own brewery in Helsingborg in the old train yard a bit to the south of the central train station but this brewery has a capacity of well over a hundred thousand litres of beer per month. In 2016 they also started their own beer festival which is called Brewski Val. They had over 40 different brewers in the first year and this has expanded year on year. I've been there the last three years I think in 2020 it's cancelled because of the COVID-19 situation but um, I think it will probably be back for 2021 so you will see another festival uh, video in 2021 and um, but they also used to open up the brewery once a month as a bar which was called Barsky and uh, they now have their own bar in Helsingborg which goes by the same name and this opened back in 2018 so I think they should be getting close to their second birthday now I think it opened in like August or something so we're not too far away from the second um, the second birthday of Barsky um, but they now brew some beer as well in America at Tampa Bay Brewing Company who have done collaborations with them and they're looking to open up another bar in Oslo as well and Marcus has a distribution company up there which is called Beersky and he imports the Swedish beers into Norway. I'm not sure if he's got a deal with uh, Vinmonopolet up there as you know some of the other importers into Sweden have um, but maybe he is going to be selling some of the, the Swedish beers such as Beer Bibliothek. I think he's, it was Beer Bibliothek, Duck Pond and a few others, Morgan Doggins and things like that that were um, that were being distributed by Beerscape which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah you will see more Swedish beers in Norway hopefully and hopefully we get more Norwegian things down here as well. But um, over 2019 these guys produced around 500,000 litres of beer in total and as of June 2020 when I'm reviewing this beer for you they have produced over uh, just around 300 different types of beer. I think the exact number was like 298 when I took a little quick look at Untapped before this, uh, before this video. So just shy of 300 beers as of June 2020 from uh, Brewski. But these guys, um, they mainly brew like Berliner Weisses and New England IPAs. They don't do many other styles apart from that. Two of my favourite beers that I've had from these guys recently were the Triple Berry Pie and the Strawberry Pie. And, uh, you know, one of my favourite beers of all time, I think, from 
Brewski would be the Conan double IPA. That's that's one that I really hold in uh, in very high esteem. But the Triple Threat that I had was also a very very good beer actually. So uh, yeah, Brewski are definitely one of the Swedish breweries that you need to check out if you get the chance. So um, yeah, one of my favourites. If they do, if you do find an Imperial Stout from these guys, I recommend you try it. I wish they did them more often, and I wish they did more styles different uh, more often as well. But Brewski and Beer Bibliotheque, as I say, two of my favourite Swedish breweries, and it's very nice to see them collaborate together. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for Brewski then. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different uh, beers and stuff that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So um, yeah, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. There you can see that is, I think, Trucker on the front there. Um, I'm sure I saw, I looked on the Beer Bibliotech um, Facebook page to try and figure out who, um, you know, who this who this guy was in the front. I think this one, it says that this is one of their sixth anniversary beers. There is another one that you'll see me review later, a collaboration with North Brewing. Um, and um, I think this, I'm not sure if this guy, Trucker, um, there was a post on the page that was to do with the Red Lion bar in Gothenburg, which is a really quite popular beer bar. I'm not sure if Trucker um, works in there, because they were talking about how the Red Lion has supported um, Beer Bibliotech from the very beginning, so I'm not sure. By the looks of the guy that was in the picture, I think Trucker is someone who works at the uh, the Red Lion bar in uh, in Gothenburg, so maybe that's who Trucker is, but it says, don't you, the, the title of this one of course is, Don't You Look So Surprised, Happy Birthday Trucker, number 283. As I told you at the start of the video, this one is um, a New England IPA, it's 7% ABV, and one of the little touches I always like with Beer Blue Tech is that they put a made in Sweden thing and a little Swedish flag on it, Swedish craft beer, I really like that, but the artwork on this one, I have to say, as you always get with Beer Blue Tech, it's really nice and very, very tasteful. I'm not sure if the rainbow thing is meant to be a kind of gay pride or if it is just a kind of rainbow colour sort of thing, actually. But, um, yeah, happy birthday to Trucker and then happy sixth birthday, I guess, to um, to Brewski, I think. This one, it says, um, if you've been drinking craft beer in Sweden for the past six years, you'll be aware of, the, of Brewski and their great human project. It's no surprise we asked them to join us for our birthday. We love them. So, um, yeah. As I say, two very well respected Swedish craft breweries these days. Little 330 milliliter can this one. So without further ado, let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting. Very curious to see how this one turns out. There we go. Oh, and that smells good when you open it up actually. I think this is going to be a very, very nice New England IPA. I always enjoy your beer bibliotheque and Brewski, you know, these are two of the breweries that I always look for in the local and small school aid assortments. I always look to see what these guys are releasing. It's definitely nice that we've got a proper local release here in Sweden now, so the Swedish breweries do have easier access to the, the market. But, um, yeah, and I always like that. I'm, I'm glad that we get a few more beer bibliotech and brewski beers because quite often there was beers that these guys were doing that we couldn't get, unfortunately, because they were just being sent abroad. So, um, yeah, as you can see with this one, this has poured a nice kind of bright yellow, hazy, golden colour there. There's a solid, um, there's a solid, I would say, half finger of a frothy, perfect white head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but overall, um, you know, with this one, it looks pretty much as you would expect from a New England IPA. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see that this one has, uh, you know, it has pretty much no clarity to it. It is as hazy as you're going to get, and at 7%, you know, the level of haze you get out of this one is pretty damn impressive. Of course, as you go further up the alcohol, chain if you like as you get higher in alcohol content you're going to get more oats you're going to get more wheat and hence you're going to get a little bit more hazy but for a seven percenter the level of haze that this one has i think is um is uh, is pretty damn good so um yeah let's have a look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we got on nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance it smells pretty damn nice i have to say um so straight away on the malty side of things, it's got a lovely sort of bready base to it. You can really smell the smoothness of the kind of bready notes in this one. Um, so yeah, a lovely kind of white bready base to the beer. Um, it's got a lovely kind of oaty 
quality as well. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a nice bit of smoothness and creaminess out of the oats, I have to say. But yeah, the breadiness comes across as quite fluffy and quite white, like, you know, a sort of fresh bready, um, fresh bready sort of thing. I like, I do like that about this one. It definitely leans a bit more towards the, uh, the bready side of things. I really, really like that. Um, yeah, the aroma of this beer, I think, is very, very nice. Um, I do like it when there's a bit of a malty presence to them, and this one does have a good little bit of that. You can pick out a little bit of a wheaty character to this one, but I'd say this one's more of a kind of bready and oaty leaning New England IPA in terms of its um, its malt base. There's a little touch of a kind of biscuity sweetness, but as I say, overall for me the malt base is um, it really comes across as quite um, as bready and sort of oaty and creamy. As I say, the more and more I smell of it, the more I get a sort of wheaty. No, out of it, it does have a little bit of that more bitey wheat in the aroma and a little bit of biscuity sweetness too, but I would still stick with that more bready and more oaty compared to um, other uh, New England IPAs that I've had. So, um, yeah, I like, I do like how this one, um, how this one goes together. This is very, very nice. Um, the aroma of that, uh, the malt base, I really like in this one. On the hoppy side of things then, um, um, I would say there's a wee teeny bit of earthiness coming out of this one. There's a good bit of floral aromaticity. Um, and, um, you know, there is a bit, a good bit of grassiness there. I'd say that the green side of the hops, it's got a good little bit of floral character, but it's not overly pungent. To me, this beer actually leans a bit towards the kind of grassy side of things. And to be honest, I'd say that that, um, that kind of matches up well with the... Um, with the kind of bready, more oaty nature that this beer has. So yeah, it's not the most pun it's definitely not the most pungent of aromas that you're getting out of this beer. But I really like how um I do like how that how everything kind of goes together on this one. The aroma of this is quite soft, but at the same time, it's really quite nice. There were some really distinctive kind of fruity characters coming out of this one as we opened it up. I mean it had um it had some really nice kind of soft tropical fruit notes, so I'm wondering if there's maybe a bit of Victoria's Secret or something in here. Um, so yeah, straight away with this beer you'll get some really nice, um, there's a bit of a stronger passion fruit to it, but I'd say that quickly it becomes more soft and tropical in its fruity notes. You've got a little bit of the, the kind of more soft passion fruit, which of course could be Simcoe. Simcoe's really coming back into popularity uh, at the moment, um, or coming back into fashion I should say. My English is terrible these days, but yeah, Simcoe um, I think could be at play in here. Maybe there's a little bit of Victoria's Secret. The beer does have a little bit of a mangoey note to it, could well be some Citra. Idaho 7 would be the other uh, hop that this could be, because Idaho 7 gives you some really nice soft tropical fruits as well, but I do reckon there's either Simcoe or Victoria's Secret and possibly um, Idaho 7 as well. But yeah, you get some really nice kind of softer passion fruit, you know, it's out of this one, a little bit of mango, you've got a nice little bit of, um, yeah, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of mango -y quality to it as well. You've got a wee bit of a pineapple-y note, and some of the kind of softer apricot papaya qualities as well. Um, I'd say the beer doesn't, it doesn't really have a kind of citrusy, zesty sort of thing, maybe a little bit of lemony character at most, maybe there's a wee bit of centennial or something in here. Um, yeah, I don't really get any orangey or kind of zesty notes out of it. I mean, if it's got oranges to it, I'm maybe not picking them up, um, but if, it, if there was a kind of orangey leaning hop in this one, I would wonder if it's maybe a bit of sabro or something like that. It's got that very light airy kind of tangerine. I don't think there's mosaic in this one. I think mosaic would definitely give you a more noticeable orange than this. Um, so if I, I don't want to say there's orange in this but there is just something in there that is tempting me to say there's a wee tiny tiny little bit of like a tangerine note or something like that. But yeah mainly for me this beer is very kind of tropical and fruity and it leans towards that softer kind of tropical side of things. So yeah a very I would say that this beer is really almost like um, kind of reserved and a little bit like nonchalant in terms of its aroma and things like that. It's definitely, but I think with Beer Blue Tech, in fairness, I don't remember Beer Blue Tech ever really being so pungent in their aromas. I think Beer Blue Tech's aromas tend to be a little bit more subtle in my experience. Usually it's brewski. Their aromas are usually kind of big and bold and things. Beer Blue Tech, kind of, their aromas are a bit more subtle, but the flavours are very complex and things. That's that's my impression of these two breweries in fairness. But yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma. This one, a very kind of soft, smooth, malty, um, light, grassy and kind of juicy, tropical, smooth kind of tropical fruit.
aroma coming out of this one. But yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. I always need to check the Beer Blue Tech cans because these guys like to have crazy long names on their beer. So this one is called Don't You Look So Surprised, Happy Birthday Trucker, number 283, a 7% New England IPA from uh, Beer Bibliotech in Gothenburg, brewed in collaboration with Brewski from Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of the country. One of the sixth anniversary beers, I believe, from uh, Beer Bibliotech. So happy birthday to Beer Bibliotech, happy belated birthday, and uh, also nice to see them collaborating with Brewski as well. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull. Yeah, that's another really damn solid beer from um, from Beer Blue Tech. You know, it's it's one of these ones. It doesn't do anything surprising. It's just very very well crafted. You know, I've had some really really nice beers from Beer Blue Tech and from Brewscape over the last um, over the last little while, and um, this one this is a lovely soft, just kind of more creamy, more bready leaning um, New England IPA. So I like how this one goes together. Yeah, I like I do like how this goes together. So lovely, you know, this is one of these beers where it kind of reflects what the aroma um, was giving you. To be honest with you, is it, it a lot of the things I was describing to you in the aroma that very much translates into the actual flavour of this beer. So yeah, straight away with this one, you've got a lovely kind of pale malty quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue. On top of that, you can feel it kind of thickens up the further you go into the flavour. So yeah, you've got a nice kind of thicker bready quality there. If we're in the middle third of your tongue, as you move towards the front of that middle third, you've got a nice bit of a kind of oaty creaminess with this one. Um, you've got a little bit of, there is a wee touch of a biscuit sweetness in the very centre of your palate, but again, I would say that this beer really leans towards the kind of more bready and straight up malty side of things. A little bit of oaty creaminess, like I said. Um, yeah, I like. I do like how this... Um, I do like how that kind of goes together. I mean, it's as I say, this one you can't, you will get creamier New Englands from both of these breweries. To be honest with you, although in fairness, I think from Brewski tends theirs tend to be a bit more wheaty and bitey, whereas yeah, Beer Blue Techs are a bit smoother and leaned more towards the creamy side of things. But yeah, this is definitely more white bread and things like that. The, the malt base in this one I don't think is too complex. If you go towards the back third of your tongue, that white breadiness, that sort of fluffy bready quality, that spreads further back, but then as you reach the very back of the tongue, that's when you get some of the more wheaty bitiness out of this one. There is a wee bit of that kind of wheaty, bitey, grainy sort of thing coming out of the beer, so yeah. But yeah, I really like how this um I really like how the the flavour of this one kinda goes together, to be honest with you. The malt base, the soft malt base really suits it's just it's very it really is just a very soft and nice and almost casual New England IPA. It's quite hard to believe that this one is um you know, it's quite hard to believe that this one is seven percent ABV because it, it really doesn't come across that way. Um so yeah, um malt base very straight up. I don't think we really need to say much more about it. If you go behind the the front the front front corners of your palate and in a little bit, you will get a few kind of woody undertones out of the beer. But um, yeah, I mean overall, it is kind of pretty much as you would uh, as you would expect from um, from a New England IPA. Love soft, lovely, softly, soft and bready for the whole kind of two back thirds of your tongue. Little tiny bit of biscuit sweetness in the centre of your palate, and then some oaty creaminess towards the front of that, um, you know, towards the front of that kind of uh, middle third of your tongue actually. Really like how this goes together. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there, although it's not too strong. As you move further forward along the sides of the palate, you've got some nice floral aromaticity coming out of the beer. It gets a teeny little bit spicy at the front corners of the palate, but not overly much. And then round the very front curve of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of um, a lighter sort of grassy thing uh, coming out of this one and I really like how that goes together. Behind the front curve of the palate though that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy um, fruity esters start to roll their way out of the beer so let's have a little look at that. Sorry about the edit guys, camera just decided it ran out of memory so had to do the thing with the memory card again. But yeah let's look at the fruity side of this beer and see how we get on then. So 
So yeah, as I was saying with the with the aroma of this beer, it's, it's a kind of typically soft, tropical kind of note you're getting out of this one. Um, so yeah, in the front third of your tongue, if you go towards the back of the front third, you've got a little bit of a kind of almost passion fruity quality coming out of this one. It does have a very slight a very slight grapefruity flavour that just evolves from it a bit later on but mainly for me it's kind of passion fruity as you move further forward from that it does get a little bit more kind of mango like there's a wee bit of um there is a wee bit of a kind of pineapple quality in there as well but yeah the darker kind of tropical fruits they sit towards the kind of back half of that front third of the tongue so yeah there's a wee bit of a kind of passion fruity note in there as i say mainly it's the passion fruit that's giving you the sort of darker almost more sour flavours out of the beer but then as you move towards the front of the palate it gradually gets more mango like you get a little bit more kind of you get a little bit of an almost papaya type quality a little bit of apricot in there um, and just a wee bit of a kind of pineapple note as well as you reach the kind of front edge of the tongue there's maybe a wee bit of a slightly citrusy zesty kind of thing yeah I do like how um I like how that goes together in this one, I have to say. Yeah. The kind of citrusy zesty sort of thing is, um, I have to say, the citrusy zesty side of this beer, I, I do quite like. It just gives you a wee bit of bitiness on the kind of front of the tongue, and it matches up with the little bit of bitiness that the wheat gives you at the very back of the palate too. So there is a wee bit of a kind of citrusy zesty kind of thing in that. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a wee bit of centennial in this beer to be honest with you but I think in terms of the fruitiness I think maybe um, I think maybe a bit of Simcoe a bit of Victoria's Secret or something like that in here I don't think Idaho 7 uh, I thought I thought Idaho 7 maybe from the aroma but I think yeah Simcoe Victoria's Secret uh, I'm not sure I don't think Citra in this one I don't think there's Citra in this it doesn't quite come across um, like that actually but um, yeah it's a really soft as I say a very soft tropically note this one and I like how that the I like how that comes out the further you go into the aftertaste more of the kind of passion fruity notes kind of linger there and I do like um, how that goes together in this beer this one is uh, is really nicely done I have to say so well done to both Brewski and uh, Beer Bibliotech on this it's a very soft bready grassy leaning and um, kind of soft just soft tropical fruit New England IPA, it really, it, it pretty much reflects the aroma that I picked out earlier, to be quite honest with you. So yeah, thumbs up to both breweries on this one. In terms of the mouthfeel then, um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, I would say that this one is, um, yeah, I would say that this one is pretty mid-bodied, the carbonation is very smooth. Um, yeah, it's more of it's got a bit of creaminess to it, but at the same time, it comes across as more kind of straight and malty. So a little bit of breadiness, a little bit creamy, a little bit creamy and smooth, and um, you know, a little bit creamy and smooth, a little bit bready, and there's there's not really much sweetness to uh, to this one, I would say either. I mean, the it, it's it, it's mainly as I say smooth. There's not really a, a sweet edge to this one, but a little bit of a juicy kind of fruity thing as well so yeah on the hoppy side of things as I say not too bitter I mean this is your fairly standard kind of 25 30 IBUs that you would expect for a New England IPA malt base as I say is quite smooth not really creamy not really sweet mainly kind of almost bready and straight malty then the fruitiness that you get out of this beer it doesn't even have a, a kind of oily character to it. it is a little bit lighter and more sort of uh, juicy in that sense so I do like how the the this beer goes together i like how everything kind of fits together in this one so yeah it gets a thumbs up from me this beer and yeah, i would recommend that you try this definitely one of the the more bready leaning new england's that i've come across in recent times actually but yeah both very capable breweries in this um kind of style if you like and i guess it sort of meets the what you would expect because i've always found that brewski's new england's are a bit more wheaty and kind of bitey to be honest with you whereas the beer blue type ones i think have always leaned a bit more towards the kind of creamy side of things so i guess that this beer is what might you know what would probably come naturally from uh, from both of these breweries when you combine them together so yeah this is an interesting one and as i say i do recommend that you have a go at this beer for yourself 
and uh, and see how you get on. But yeah, big thumbs up to both Bibliotech and Brewski. Happy birthday to uh, to Brewski, of course, for this one, belated sixth birthday. But yeah, a lovely beer this one, and I'm glad I was able to review it for you. So nice, grassy leaning, bready, and uh, soft tropical fruit New England IPA. This one. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from uh, Beer Bibliotech and from Brewski. We will return to both of these breweries at some point fairly soon of course and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this review check out my social media check out both of these breweries but this one was the Don't You Look So Surprised Happy Birthday Trucker number 283 from Beer Bibliotech in uh, Gothenburg and Brewski in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the very south of Sweden thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon Slangent Scott make sure you check out Brewski and Beer Bibliotech cheers